Hello everyone, I'm Em. welcome back to Tech Block. Today we are going to be unboxing, setting up and testing the newly released Razer Basilisk Ultimate Mouse right here. A very customizable mouse that also has a very, very big price point. Link in the description to this mouse, of course, if you want to go check the pricing for your own country. Links will be to Amazon as well as the Razer store, so press the links down there. And that'll take you to where you can buy one of these Razer Basilisk mice. Anyway, we should probably get this mouse unboxed, as there's a lot of things to cover in this video. This mouse is absolutely jam-packed with tons of cool features. Some features that I've not seen before on Razer mice. Alright, let's jump into it. Alrighty, so as always, Razer mice come very well packaged, and here is the mouse itself. Razer Basilisk Ultimate, and it does of course come with the charging dock. If you're wondering how this charging dock looks like, let me take you to the setup right here. And we have the Razer Viper Ultimate mouse right here. It's an ultra lightweight mouse at just 74 grams, and I've been using it in my setup, working on my full review about this mouse. If you want to go watch my full video all about the Razer Viper Ultimate mouse, press on the card on screen right now to go watch that one. Getting back to the charging dock though, yes, both mice are compatible with the exact same charging dock as they both come with the exact same charging dock, they're identical. Anyway, this mouse happens to be quite special as it comes with 11 programmable buttons, 14 customizable RGB lighting zones powered by Razer Chroma, of course. There are LEDs on the scroll wheel on the side of the mouse here, on the Razer logo itself. There are RGB LED lights absolutely all over this mouse and it still somehow manages to achieve up to 100 hours of battery life with all those LEDs absolutely all over the mouse. It does of course feature the newly released hyperspeed wireless technology, which allows the mouse to transmit data from your mouse to the PC 25% faster than anything else on the market. This allows them to achieve their lowest click latency ever, as well as improved power efficiency. That's one of the reasons why the mouse can actually achieve up to 100 hours of battery life, thanks to the power efficiency improvements on the Razer Hyperspeed wireless technology. This mouse also happens to feature Razer's newly released Focus Plus 20,000 DPI optical sensor. It is the exact same sensor found in the Razer Viper Ultimate mouse, which is trusted by many esports professionals nowadays. So it's a very, very high-end gaming sensor right here. 20,000 DPI, it's extremely responsive as well, thanks to, of course, the Razer Hyperspeed wireless technology. This mouse also features Razer's optical mouse switches, which allow you to achieve lower click latency and improved durability, as these mouse switches are rated for up to 70 million key clicks each. And finally, one of the main features of this Basilisk Ultimate Mouse right here is the customizable scroll wheel resistance right here, which you might be like, what on earth is that? Essentially, there's like a little resistance adjustment like scroll wheel beneath the mouse, which allows you to adjust the scroll wheel resistance on the actual scroll wheel on the mouse right here. If that doesn't make any sense, I'll show you in just a moment once we actually get this mouse unboxed. But it is actually a feature that I'm quite excited about. All right, so without further ado, let's get this guy unboxed with the old karambit knife right here. Just one bit of tape to open this guy up. I believe it's held on by magnets or something. Yes, it is. So opening this guy up, you're gonna get greeted with, of course, the Razer charging dock. Literally the exact same charging dock that we have right here, but of course for another <laughs> Razer mouse. Lovely. I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna be keeping both of these charging docks in my setup, as I really don't need two. They both do the exact same thing, so I'm gonna probably just be keeping that guy and use both of these mice uh, for one charging dock, which I don't think will be a problem. All right, so here is the mouse itself, the Razer Basilisk Ultimate. To be honest, the mouse feels pretty damn good so far. Feels very ergonomic, and this is probably gonna be the mouse I'm gonna be switching to permanently after this video. And I'm gonna have to be posting my full review of the Razer Viper Ultimate pretty damn soon. So yeah, this is gonna be my new mouse from now on. Same sensor and technology as the Viper Ultimate, of course, but in a very, very different shape with loads more RGB lighting, loads more customizability. The mouse does weigh 107 grams, which is quite a bit more than the Viper Ultimate, which only weighs in at 74 grams. It's an ultra lightweight mouse, but this one here happens to be a much bigger mouse overall, packed with way more features. So it kind of makes sense that it weighs quite a bit more as well. All right, we should probably do the old peel right here. Oh yeah. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, the scroll wheel resistance, this is how you adjust it. As you can see, there's a little tiny scroll wheel at the bottom of the mouse here. I've never seen anything quite like this before, but Razer have gone ahead and added scroll wheel resistance to this mouse, which I'm about to put to the test right now. Okay, so this is the scroll wheel. All right, so at the moment, the scroll wheel I feel like the resistance is kind of cranked up a little bit, so it does feel a bit heavier and you do need to put a bit more power into it to actually scroll. Let's try to reduce the resistance 
by just continuously scrolling on the minus thing. Oh my god. Okay, that does legit make a very big difference. What the hell? How far can we go in this? Okay, I think I've reached the limit here. But we've essentially taken out any bit of like tactile contact, I guess. Like the scroll wheel no longer feels like tactile. You no longer feel each one of the scrolls. So yeah, there's that. Let's try to crank the resistance up as much as I possibly can. Okay, I think that's the max. Whoa, that has actually made a very big difference. Well, to be honest, I'm a fan of this feature so far. Uh, pretty cool to be able to control your scroll wheel resistance. I've never seen anything quite like this on any of Razer's mice before, but to be honest, I hope they continue adding this feature to more mice in the future, as it's pretty damn cool being able to adjust your scroll wheel resistance. I'm gonna be probably keeping it at a very high resistance and keeping the scroll wheel like quite heavy and very tactile, but yeah, cool feature. I like it. Taking a look down here, you're gonna find Razer's 20,000 dpi Focus Plus optical sensor that is extremely accurate. And then right here beside it, we're going to find the USB 2.4 gigahertz dongle that you're gonna be plugging into your laptop, PC, or whatever device you're trying to use this mouse with. I should also mention that this mouse is actually compatible with Xbox One, but for basic inputs only. All right, let's go ahead and turn the mouse on by flicking this switch at the bottom right here. So it should be green instead of red, and of course, uh, this little LED at the bottom is going to light up, showing you that the mouse is of course turned on. Flipping the mouse around, you're gonna notice a whole load of RGB lighting peeking through. The scroll wheel is lighting up, the Razer logo is lighting up, as well as all of these LEDs right here. As mentioned earlier, a total of 14 customizable RGB LED lights, powered by Razer Chroma, of course, all over this mouse. Oh, there's even LEDs here. Damn, this is sick, dude. There are so many freaking RGB LEDs on this mouse. This is awesome. All right, and one more thing I should probably mention just before we continue on with the rest of the unboxing. This mouse uses 100% PTFE mouse feet, I believe they're called. These mouse feet are extremely smooth and can be found on the Razer Viper Ultimate Mouse as well. Basically, these mouse feet here allow the mouse to effortlessly glide on various mouse mat surfaces. This one happens to be hard. However, this will also work very well with something like a cloth mouse mat. And before I get like a hundred comments asking me, does this mouse have RGBM? Yes, I can confirm this mouse does have a whole load of RGB. Alrighty, taking a look at all the other contents right here, let's take a look at what we get. We do, of course, get some Razer stickers. All right, so massive three-headed snake logo right here, Razer logo in text, two powered by Razer Chroma stickers, and then finally the four gamers by gamers sticker here as well. Okay, taking a look over here, we do get a little piece of paper here, signed by the CEO of Razer, Min Liang Tan. And yeah, this pretty much just says, Unleash your true potential, dude. So we're gonna put that right there. And then we got a booklet over here as well. Razer Basilisk Ultimate, just a quick start guide, I suppose, and a booklet telling you absolutely everything you gotta know about your brand new mouse. I think I forgot to mention earlier, but this button right here, uh, this allows you to switch profiles on your mouse, and this LED will change color depending on what profile you choose. As for all the other stuff you get with a mouse, you do, of course, get a 1.8 meter or six foot long a braided Speedflex cable right here from Razer. This is basically like Razer's new types of cables. Not only does this cable feel very lightweight, but it still maintains a very high level of quality. And I believe this is the final item we get inside of the box. Now the reason Razer actually chose to use the Speedflex cable is because this mouse can not only be used in wireless mode, but it can also be used in wired mode. So if you do happen to need to use the mouse in wired mode, Razer have thrown in their Speedflex cable, which is of course very lightweight. And when using a wired mouse, ideally you don't want a heavy cable dragging your mouse down and potentially throwing you off and missing a shot when playing a game like Counter-Strike, for example. So they do allow you to use the mouse in wired mode. Simply plug this into the back of your PC or laptop or whatever, and you can use the mouse in wired mode without any problem. Alternatively though, go ahead and plug this micro USB cable that comes with the mouse. Plug this into the Razer charging dock instead. Plug your 2.4 gigahertz dongle into this charging dock as well and boom you can use the mouse in wireless mode just like that. However in this case I'm not going to be using this charging dock as I already have one because it came with a Viper Ultimate mouse. So I'm going to be putting this dock away and all I'm going to be doing is plugging in this 2.4 gigahertz dongle into my Razer Chroma base station right here which also has another 2.4 gigahertz dongle right beside it for my headphones which I believe are sitting right there. The Nari Ultimate headphones they are. All right, we've just plugged the mouse in. I'm gonna put the Viper Ultimate on its charging dock. So what you can essentially do, if you're crazy like me and you've picked up two of Razer's mice, you can essentially have two mice in your gaming setup. 
once this one dies, or if you just want to use this one instead of that one. All you got to do, man, is swap them around. Boom, this one's charging, and now you can use this one. And once this mouse runs out of battery, or you just fancy using the Basilisk Ultimate instead, boom, swap them over, and here you go. You can use this mouse instead. The Razer Synapse 3 app has prompted us to update their software in order to, you know, support this mouse and sync everything up to the rest of your Chroma-enabled devices. Whilst this mouse is updating, oh, it just finished, so we can go ahead and press restart. Why not? So, this mouse does come with this extension paddle. I've seen Razer include this type of feature in previous mice before, I think. I'm pretty sure I've seen it on at least one of their mice before. This paddle right here will essentially act as an extra button that you can program and do whatever you want with. And I believe there's some kind of flap here, like a rubber flap that you can pop out or pop open. Um, okay, so you pop this out, cool and you simply replace it with this metal extension. Oh wow, it's like magnetic, it just pops into place. And how would you take it off? Wow, so very, very straightforward, very simple. If you wanna take it off and replace it with the rubber thingy, uh, you can do, it's genuinely very, very quick. Whoa, whoa, that is actually a feature I could see myself using. I never thought that I would ever like this or this would be useful in any sort of way, but I don't know what kind of switch they've used for this, but it just feels very good to press. I know that might kind of sound weird, but I could genuinely see myself mapping this to something, let's say in a game or in like an editing program like Photoshop or Adobe Premiere, for example. I could see myself genuinely using this button. This is sick. I never thought I would actually like this type of feature and I kind of always thought it was a bit of a gimmick, like hardly anyone would use this type of thing. But to be completely honest with you, this is sick. This is actually like a great place for a button. The entire shape of the mouse in general actually feels very, very nice to use and just very nice in my hand. And this paddle shifter here is just in a perfect spot. All right, so I've gone ahead and opened up Razer Synapse 3. As you can see, the mouse has been detected, Razer Basilisk Ultimate, alongside all the other Razer gear in this setup. All right, let's press on the mouse and see what exactly we can do in the software here. When it comes to customizability in this mouse, you can customize a whole lot of these buttons to do just about anything you want in the Razer Synapse 3 software. For example, I've gone ahead and selected this paddle shift extension button right here, which I've programmed to act as an end key on my keyboard. So you can go ahead and program just about any of the buttons on this mouse to act as macro keys, adjust sensitivity, act as a different kind of mouse function. There's a whole lot of lists for you to choose from here. Act as a keyboard function. This can be a simple key recording. This can be alphanumeric stuff, uh, navigation. So I'm gonna be actually probably setting mine to end as I feel like that's maybe a useful feature for me when it comes to like editing in Premiere. Make it act as the Razer Hypershift button. Make it launch a program or a website. Multimedia, volume up, down, mute, micromute, all sorts of stuff. Play, pause, next track. Window shortcuts, make it launch a calculator, MS Paint, Notepad, cut, copy, paste, switch apps, all sorts of crazy things. You can even make it launch the Razer. You can even make, you can even set a dedicated button on your mouse to launch something like the Windows Task Manager. I'm gonna show you this right now and show you that it does actually work. So I'm gonna press this button right here. And oh, it actually came up on the other screen, but well, you may have just seen it there. Uh, yeah, Windows Task Manager just opened up by me pressing this button right here. But that just goes to show you how customizable Razer mice really are when it comes to Razer Synapse. All right, so I'm gonna set this back to keyboard function escape. Moving on, we have the Razer performance tab right here, which essentially allows you to adjust sensitivity stages as well as potting rate. Sensitivity stages on this mouse are also completely optional. If you don't want any sensitivity stages, simply disable them and just stick to a single DPI setting on your mouse. Alternatively though, you can go ahead and enable this feature and have anywhere from two sensitivity stages all the way up to five, each stage, of course, being completely customizable. You can set the DPI to absolutely whatever you want. Stage two can be 850, stage three can be 900, and stage four and five can be whatever you want. Stage four and five can, of course, be whatever you want as well. Polling rates on this mouse can also be adjusted all the way from 125 up to 1000. Taking a look at the calibration tab, this allows you to adjust the liftoff distance and the tracking distance, I suppose, of your mouse. By default, it is set to two millimeters of tracking distance. However, you can set this all the way down to one or up to three millimeters, and you can go ahead and feel the difference of this adjustment in real time. So we currently have set this to just one millimeter off the surface. You can set this all the way up to three, and the Focus Plus optical sensor by Razer is now tracking the movements of the mouse, even though I've lifted the mouse up about three millimeters 
off of the surface it's trying to actually track. I'm gonna probably set this back to around one millimeter though, as that's just my own personal preference. Taking a look at the power options, very basic stuff here. We have settings for the wireless power saving mode. So this I would actually recommend that you do keep at around five minutes, if not even less, just to help preserve battery life. We're taking a look at the various lighting effects found in Razer Synapse, we can go ahead and set the mouse to a breathing mode, and this can be one color, two colors, or maybe random colors entirely. And we can go ahead and sync the setting to every single Razer Chroma enabled device. As you can see right there, everything is perfectly in sync, breathing in and out of the color green. We also have a reactive mode that is currently set to green, so when I press the mouse button, the mouse, mouse mat, and mouse charging dock will react. Next up, we have Spectrum Cycle. Once again, sync this up to all your other Chrome enabled devices. And finally, Wave, which I'm sure is everyone's favorite effect. And once you place the mouse on the charging dock, it of course goes into charging mode and will begin to slowly breathe in and out, showing you that it is charging. And just before I play with a cannon strike and actually put the mouse to the test in like a gaming scenario, you can check the battery level of the mouse in the top right hand corner right here in Razer Synapse. All right, let's minimize Razer Synapse and play a bit of counter strike. Now Razer did specifically mention that because you can adjust the scroll wheel sensitivity, this will allow you to kind of like more easily hit bunny hops. Damn, I'm getting some nice kills here. There's someone in pit. Another no scope. Man, we are on fire here. This is the one behind me. How? How can Counter-Strike like spawn us there, man? This is unreal. I'm either lagging because of ping or I'm lagging because of FPS because this game does not feel very stable at the moment. But this mouse, however, does feel very good to use in Counter-Strike. This scroll wheel, I am very much liking. What on earth? Two camps there. It does weigh quite a bit more than my Razer Viper, which I've been using for quite a while now. So it's taking a little bit of time to get used to the, like, the, the extra weight of the mouse. But apart from that, like it feels absolutely solid. It's like an all round, very nice mouse to use. Like it just feels nice in my hand. I'm able to like grip the mouse very well. I don't even know how I got him there, but I, oh, the lag, I am flying. Yet I'm still doing okay. Someone in lower tunnel. Gonna be one more on door. Oh, the lag! There's a guy coming from B. I feel like the lag really isn't helping me here. I'm like playing at a disadvantage here with this new mouse. Oh god. Mouse feels solid. The lag and the possible FPS issues, they're not very really loyal. Not ideal scenario for testing out a mouse like this, but hey. Ooh, how about a deagle? Let's go. Oh no, deagle with this lag? Yeah, great idea. How? How can an enemy just spawn right behind me like that? How is that normal? Oh my god, the lucky deags. Oh, I got another one, damn. It feels weird to say this, but I kind of like this mouse more than the lightweight like esports mouse, which is the Razer Viper that I have here. This one just, it feels like more ergonomic. It just feels nicer in my hand. All right, but that'll pretty much be it for today's video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting the channel lately. It's been sick, man. Thanks for watching my unboxing review slash overview of the newly released Razer Basilisk Ultimate Mouse right here. To be honest, it is a very nice mouse. Feels absolutely fantastic absolutely jam-packed with RGB lighting if you're into that kind of thing and yeah just an all-round very good mouse. I'm genuinely very happy with it this paddle shifter extension as well never had this kind of feature before but seems very useful to be honest. So yeah guys if you want to go buy this mouse the link in the description down below to both Amazon as well as the Razer store and yeah hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.